quickly, let's talk about in Kaduna, uh, Kaduna politics. Now, it's no news that there is no love lost between yourself and the governor of Kaduna State, Nasir El Rufai. Now, the governor says it's because you wish to run for the 2019 elections. It's something that you have said could happen. You haven't denied it. Um, but why do you think that this is the only way to go about it? Well, um, it may be unfair to him in the sense that I wish you could have asked him when he came about me. And I could have used this opportunity to address him point by point about what he said. But I think he is in the habit of telling people that I'm criticizing him because I want to be the governor of Kaduna State. And he has forgotten that before he became the governor of Kaduna State, I have been critical of people who were in power then. And even during military rule, when he was even nobody in, in Nigeria's political scene. So does it mean that by him writing a memo to the president, he wants to be a president or he wants to be a vice president? I don't think so. I well, think he, he, he wrote that memo in private. You criticize him in public. I think you have been all enough in journalism and I have been long enough in activism to know how such things are manipulated. I can write a memo to you and simply pretend I wasn't the one who leaked it because I want to achieve two things, eat my cake and have it, and that's all. Well, regardless of who, who's licked it, I mean, because the governor has denied that, that he did, I mean, he says he did not, it doesn't remove the fact that you criticize him openly. Why do you do so? Well, he has been critical of Mr. President, too, openly. As far as I'm concerned, uh, we have ideological and political differences. He come from the political right, the conservative, ultra-liberals, people who are privatizing, uh, who are liberalizing, who are uh, for IMF and World Bank, and I come from the left-hand side of political divide. And then uh, politically, uh, we have been in the same party, but he, I wasn't his person during the primary election. He has a candidate which I defeated. And then we're supposed to move on, but unfortunately, uh, I found all that he was accusing the president of. He is also there. He has cabals in Kaduna. They are there. The issue of incompetence, he is also with him. And there are many issues. But as far as I'm concerned, uh, he is a person, too, who never shy away from expressing his opinion in any way. And I respect him for that. So I think in that aspect, we are simply working together. As so this is stemming from the politics of the primaries that brought you as the... APC uh, standard bearer for uh, the Senate for the constituency you represent? Well, he never wished um, perhaps that I become what I am today because he was for someone. And I think the origin of it began there. And then it went on to the level of him sponsoring uh, escorts from the party uh, to suspend me and then went on. Uh, recently, even two days ago, there were press conferences. I think he has a strategy of saying that I don't talk about him, but he simply pushed people to do it. So the origin has to do with the primary. But he said that I, uh, he refused to give me commissioners and appointment his government to why I was firing him. But I was reading somewhere in his memo, he was saying the president doesn't consult the governors. I don't know whether he consults me before appointing his cabinet, which he never. So as far as I'm concerned, in as much as we want the success of our party, and we have our own personal differences, but I think the interest of the people is what matters most. And as a governor, and I still reserve myself, I still respect him in a number of ways, but uh, in earnest, I have to express my own opinion, and I, and I see things that are going wrong. Now, quickly, we have very little time now. I'm going to ask you that you've declared your assets publicly. Are you disappointed that none of your colleagues have followed suit? Well, that is a big problem. Um, people say... They are Buharists. Uh, they are Buharis in every possible way uh, to the point of psychophancy. But when it comes to towing the line of Buhari, that becomes a problem. And I think the, the highest form of transparency is for one to publicly declare his asset. And I think people have already been saying clearly that our wealth has been stolen, taken to Dubai, uh, Malaysia, and other countries of the West. But I think Nigeria's wealth is hidden in the files of the Code of Conduct Bureau where people are protected by the law of secrecy and privacy 
to simply draw or the number of houses, the cars, the money is touched be beyond the poor view of Nigerians, and that was very wrong. So very directly, are you saying that you're disappointed and none of your colleagues has followed suit? I'm highly disappointed because I want each and every person who believes in President Muhammad Buhari to tow the line of President Muhammad Buhari. Would you say it's as easy as to affect change from the outside than the inside, or is it easier on the inside, now that you're a senator? Well, uh, you can do a number of things. Um, from the inside, there are changes you can do. That is, you have the levers of power, and you have the opportunity to be on the seat and to affect all the necessary changes using those apparatus of the state. And from the outside, as an activist or as an organized civil society, you mount pressure, you agitate, and then you create the necessary awareness and awakening in the society to apply pressure on government. So you can do both, both in and out. Which is easier? I think the easiest one to do is the one from the outside. Because when you are inside, you will be impeded, you will be chained, you will be inhibited by some sort of allegiances to the party, allegiance to the institution you serve, and then some things you see, you don't say it, and sometimes you are even made to bury your heads in the sand to pretend you don't see it. But as an activist, you have the freedom. You are guided by principle, by a set of standards. And those are the easiest times to which I felt. Oh, Sani, it's a shame. Sani, I'm afraid that we have to go now. We have to say thank you for coming on Hard Copy. I appreciate your time, too. Well, that's the program tonight. We appreciate your comments and mails on our previous programs. You too can be a part of the program. Please use the addresses showing, hopefully, on your screen. Yes, it is. Thank you for watching tonight. I'm Maupe Ogun. See you next week.